Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to answer a viewer's question. They want to know if you have two tables, one table has an employee's name and a value for estimated hours that's going to be used on a project, and a second table that has the employee's name again and the actual hours used on the project, is there a way to combine those two tables onto a single form or a single report and and also calculate the difference. So did they exceed the hours? Did they, did, were there hours to spare? Was it exactly even? And the answer is yes, you certainly can do that. Now, the first thing you might say is, well, gee, combine the two tables. Well, you might not be able to do that. You might not be able to do that because one of the tables might be an HR table. Maybe that's the actual table where someone's putting in their work hours and you can't just combine the two. We will kind of combine them insofar as that we're going to have a query that refers to both of them, but we're not going to actually create a, a separate third table. Okay, and having said that, I just want to take a moment to say that this isn't going to be as introductory as some of my videos because of the highly specific nature of this request. If I go through every single explanation I normally do, uh, it would probably take a couple hours. So I'm not going to skip anything, but I'm just not going to go into the deep dive like I normally do. So create table, view, design, and table one is fine for the name. We don't care. We're going to get rid of the primary key. It's not necessary. And let's call this EMP underscore name. And this is going to be short text. And then we'll call this EST underscore hours. So estimated hours, and this will be a number. So far, so good. We save it, and now we create the second table. So rinse and repeat, create, table, back to home, view, design view. Save the name because we don't care about the name for this particular demo. We get rid of the primary key simply because it's not needed. And again, we'll use employee name. Now, technically, it does not have to be the same. I'll show you how you get those fields to link, but it doesn't actually have to have the same uh, field name. The values within the field need to match, but the name it's the, the the field name itself does not. And I'll show you how that works. So again, this is going to be a short text, and this is going to be actual underscore hours, and this will again be a number. And we close it and save it. Okay, so far, so good. We've created two tables, and the two tables are going to store separately the employee and the corresponding projected hours, and the employee and the actual hours. Now let's take a moment to do some of the data entry. The actual values don't matter, but we'll just put something in here for placeholder data. So let's see, so Claire, and estimated hours 40, and then Leon, estimated hours 60, Jill, estimated hours 80, Rebecca, estimated hours 100, and Chris, he's an overachiever, so estimated hours just 15. All right, so that's our table that has the name and then the estimated hours. And if you don't notice, it didn't ask me to save it, and that's because as soon as you enter a value, it's saved. So the only time you're going to be asked to save a table is if you're making structural changes. As soon as you make data change, the data is already stored. So let's open up our other table. This is has storing the names and the actual hours. So... And just so you know, the order doesn't have to be the same. So Chris, and again, the overachiever, he only took five hours. Rebecca, if I could spell. Let's say 10. And Chris, oops, sorry, or I did Chris. Leon, 20. Jill. 30, and did I forget anyone? Claire.
we'll say 35. And not all the values have to be in both tables insofar as that if there isn't a match, then it just won't be displayed. So generally speaking, if you're matching up tables, if you're matching up a field, yes, you want the values to match or else you won't find any matches. But um, if for some reason someone made a projection but didn't actually work any hours, you just won't get a match. And you'll see why next. OK, so we did our data entry. So to make this work, what we're going to do is, like I said, we're not going to combine the tables per se, but we are going to have a query that reaches out to both of these tables. And then the the report is then going to use that query as a data source. So rather than saying use this table, use this table, the, the report is going to say use the query, and the query is using both tables. So let's go to create, query design, and you can either select from here, you can just drag and drop from here. So we'll close this and just table and table. Now this is what I was saying about how this does not need to match this as far as the field name. What matters is that there's values that match up within those fields. Because all you have to do is say this. All I did was left click, drag and drop. So I left clicked, held, dragged and let go. What you're saying is that this is going to look for matches here. So that's why this could be whatever you want it to be. You could have actually spelled out the word employee or just be ename. Because this is where you're telling access that these are related. Okay, so we're going to take employee name, estimated hours, actual hours, close, and save. And believe it or not, we are very close to being done already. So, create, and we'll do blank report, view, design. Now, I do want to take a moment to mention that unlike a form, if you use a form, this is the size of the form. Not so much the case with a report. With a report, this gets repeated for each and every entry. So, one of the last things you're going to see me do is shrink this in. Okay, so we said that we want the query to be used as the data source for the report. So make sure you have the dot up here selected. Go to design, property sheet, see what says data, record source. We're going to say what the record source for this report is. We are going to choose the query. So now by doing that, it will now let us use fields from that query. So add additional fields, existing fields, excuse me, and you can see they're here. So employee name, we're just going to grab the upper left corner so as that we can kind of move these independently. So employee name, estimated hours, and actual hours. But again, the request isn't just this. The request is really all tied together by saying, okay, what's the difference? So first, let's shrink this up. So all I did was point left click, because like I said, this gets repeated per record. So let's just take a minute to run this. See how that space gets repeated each and every time? So there's employee name, the estimated hours, and the actual hours. So what the requester wants is a calculation. So go back to view, design, and we're just going to add a field here. So what we do is in design, we're going to take text box, just draw that out. Again, you can move this independently by grabbing the little handle in the upper left corner. And you can name this whatever you want. The text field here doesn't matter. So we'll just call it diff for difference. All right, and this is where everything comes together. So this needs a value. So we go to property sheet. Now, I want to take a minute to point out that when you click on property, the properties over here is what is selected. So at first, we had the report as a whole selected. So we're looking at the properties of the report. Here we have a single field selected. So it's the properties of just that field. So data, control source. So with this selected, you right-click on Control Source, and there's a few other ways that you can get to this as well. 
we'll click on build. And then what we're going to do is this lets us know all the available functions and all the available fields that can be manipulated and, and, and modified on this form. So as you uh, on this report, excuse me, report, not form. So over here, you can see it's looking at report one. Well, this is report one. OK, so over here, it's showing what is available. Well, there's employee name and there's uh, excuse me. There's um, estimated hours and actual hours, estimated hours, actual hours. OK, so what we want to do is we we'll say that this field is equal to estimated hours minus actual hours and that should do it and now we will run this so Chris used an estimate of 10 hours used only five hours the difference is 10 so he overshot by 10 hours employee name Rebecca she estimated a hundred she only used 10 difference is 90 so the math is working out Leon 60 20 40 Jill 80 30 50 Claire 40, 35, 5. So that gives you the calculation. Now you could say, well, what would you do with this? There's a couple of possibilities because a lot of times when uh, a department is making a projection for budget, they're of course looking at labor hours. So you could use a version of this to basically look at the projected hours needed and then the actual hours needed. And then you find out if someone's maybe um, asking for more budget than they really need. I don't mean that in any kind of cynical or negative sense, just that is one control that you could use. And there's other applications. And again, even though we used estimated hours and actual hours, this is really not the key. It's the difference. So this could be estimated cost, actual cost, what's the difference? So you could look at an overrun because say the actual exceeded this. In this case, I simply used it uh, I, I simply always had the difference be a positive, but what if the difference is a negative? Then that means they underestimated and they took too much. So say Chris estimated 15, but actual hours were 20. Well, this would be a negative five. So he underestimated. And again, you could use that for managerial decisions. And there's a few other things you could do with the report to try to highlight uh, certain numbers, certain ranges and things like that. So if you all found this interested and want to see a follow up, just uh, do a like comment as far as what you want to see the report do. But I think that basically covers the request from the viewer. And again, I hope that uh, this was helpful. And uh, just keep the uh, requests coming.